Okay, I did say I was going to look at some noise. So here's the deal. We have the microphone and the vibration sensor over the audio driver. It's in a plastic box and there's the MP3 player which is going to be sending the noise. And we're going to look at it on the scope. Okay, let's turn on the noise. Okay, we can see that there's a lot of frequencies in this uh, white noise. Alright, so we've got the noise all compressed on the screen. Let's do a fast Fourier transform. And we can see there's a noise band down here. Let's increase the size of that and this scope is great you can just pinch to zoom uh, a little bit more and just a tiny bit more there so this is about 20 kilohertz out here so it's it's dropping off at uh, 18 and a half kilohertz but it's, it's roughly flat um, fairly uniform noise even though that speaker driver isn't all that uniform so let's look at pink noise see if that's any difference oh I want to get a little bit more on the screen here. So this is out to 23 kilohertz so you, you can see that it does taper down more than the white noise which is pretty cool that this uh, transducer is able to, to actually show the difference between white noise and pink noise and there are obviously audio noises but they're in the same frequency range that this transducer can pick up so that's an interesting output so one other thing I wanted to do while I was here is to have a look at to see if I could see some harmonics from a uh, square wave so let's put on the function generator generate a square wave See that just disappeared on me a square wave um, and I would like the frequency to be say 500 Hertz to give this speaker driver a chance to follow it and put that output on so we can hear that tone oh I have to have a look at this so it's not exactly coming through as a square wave and neither is the microphone just pressing on the plastic here to see if I can get a better coupling however let's look at the frequency response anyway okay I want a lot of data on the screen let's do a fast Fourier transform and I see all kinds of harmonics Let's just have a look at the period between the harmonics. 
So these are all the harmonics in that square wave. That is really good because it's it's collecting a lot of them. Now, it's not actually a square wave, but as we can see, the waveform that is showing up has a lot of harmonics in it at this level and then a s in between harmonics here. These may be the odd harmonics, these may be the even harmonics, but definitely harmonics. So um, the FFT is working. And that vibration sensor is picking up all these harmonics. Okay, just for the heck of it, let's switch it to a triangular wave. We will see a different spacing between harmonics here. Triangle. And it's way different. Still seeing harmonics, which is kind of cool. And just to have a quick look at the waveform up here, I'm going to get rid of the... So it, it almost looks like a sine wave, but of course it's not a sine wave, and you could see from the previous screen that there were lots of harmonics that uh, distort this from, a sine, from being a pure sine wave. So this speaker is not very good at following uh, very sharp edges on the uh, audio. And I think we looked at the frequency response of this speaker and it does tail off as you get up to higher frequencies. So um, it's not good at following uh, high frequency uh, signals. kind of amazing that the speaker sounds so intelligible even though it's got such crappy frequency response. And just to see what the microphone picks up in terms of uh, uh, actual waveform, it's also picking up something that looks a lot like a sine wave when that should be a triangular wave. And let's go back to that uh, rectangular wave and see what that microphone looks like again not very cute